I'm talking to journalist Mike Ludwig from Truthout, truth-out.org. Well, yeah, it's it, the whole the whole oh, fracking in the ocean is a very it's a frightening story. And again, this, it looks like this is just it's about the 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 tip of the iceberg where they're just kind of starting to do this thing. You think it's going to actually happening? It's going to start happening more and more. And you know the, the the potential consequences of fracking the ocean is 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 scary. If you want to actually look at some actual consequences, we can look at another story uh, that's coming out on Truth Out uh, this week. It's also something you wrote about a year ago, and that. That is uh, the consequences of what actually happened uh, at a disaster that happened in Louisiana. Like last, this last week was actually the one year anniversary. Uh, I guess you can call it a frack anniversary of this disaster that happened in Louisiana. What happened a year ago? Um, well, a little bit over a year ago, uh, the people of the uh, uh, in near Bayou Corn um, in Louisiana, and their Pierre part these are small rural neighborhoods, pockets of of neighborhoods in uh, kind of the, the, the countryside that's just farms and bayous and petrochemical facilities. That's what this area kind of looks like. A little over a year ago, the people there were out fishing in their boats and they saw the bayous bubbling like crawfish pots. Uh, these mysterious bubbles were coming up all over the place. And they began, ner- they be- began to get very nervous about it, obviously, because it was very strange. Um, but they're... they're their uh, questions began to get answered on August 3rd last year when a, a massive sinkhole opened up about less than a half mile from many of their homes um, in the middle of a separate swamp forest where uh, several petrochemical companies had had industrial operations for decades. Um, and what had happened is an underground cavern, which a, a company called Texas Brine had operated for many years, what they do is they, they pump water to this cavern that's in a salt formation and that water becomes salty and briny and then they suck it back out again. And they use this for lots of different kinds of petrochemical processing to make many different kinds of products, plastics, stuff like that. It's kind of the lifeblood of the petrochemical industry, this, this salt that they milk from these salt formations under the earth. A cavern that they had created doing this had collapsed. All the liquid inside the cavern had shot towards the surface, fracturing much like, much like the drilling process of hydraulic fracturing. It fractured um, formations in the earth and uh, created a sinkhole at the surface, which was quickly filled full of, of oil and natural gas and brine because on, during this, this rupture, uh, actual oil and gas deposits had also ruptured, and now this oil and gas contaminated the ground and the local aquifer, they're still flaring uh, uh, gas, thousands of, of cubic feet of gas from the aquifer itself every day. That's why the bayous were bubbling, is that gas was coming up through the, the, uh, through the aquifer and then through the ground and actually through the bayous. Um, natural gas was, 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 I mean, this is, this is an unprecedented and kind of amazing environmental disaster. When you get actually out there, I flew, I got in a plane um, on, uh, on Saturday and flew over the sinkhole and I got right up next to it myself. And just the smell of, 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 and you know, you used to look at this giant 22 acre that's it's now grown from about eight to 22 acres large. You look at this giant 22 acre scar in the earth and realize that a year ago it just wasn't there and now it's there and it's full of toxic pollution. It's, okay, so let's 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 let's, let's 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 reiterate uh, just so people don't uh, so, so what happened in in Louisiana? It started out as an eight acre sinkhole where the ground just sucked into the earth and just just collapsed. Yeah. And and, and oh, oh, since that time, over this last you know year since the initial eight acres, that's really really large. Eight acres is pretty big, of a giant hole. It's actually grown to 22 acres of a giant hole that has just collapsed into the earth, which is full of oil and gas and chemicals and is just noxious. And all of these fumes and horrible things are, you know, in this this small area, this area of Louisiana. Yes, yes. And 350 people who live nearby are still under a evacuation order a year later. 
they, they have not uh, they, they cannot go but they they're, they're not allowed back in their homes because and this is one year after this happened so do, do they ever think that those people will ever ever be allowed back in their homes or, 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 or probably not I can't how could they actually fix this problem well uh, no they, they have no idea how exactly how long it could be they have to vent the aquifer of the gas and now here's here's the scary thing is that um, they're under a, a mandatory but suggested evacuation order. It's much like a hurricane where the threat and the, the, the local parish president, who's kind of like the mayor, reiterated how dangerous the situation still is last Saturday. So there's still an in, imminent threat here. It's much like a hurricane where you don't have to evacuate. They're not going to make you evacuate, but you probably should. Mm-hmm. And now because it's such a pain in the butt for these people to be living in the hotels, to be living in families, to be renting a new place to live, a lot of them have actually come and they are living in the evacuation zone with monitors in their house in case dangerous levels of gas come up through the ground into their homes and they're at risk for being poisoned or an explosion and they live with this every single day. I can't even I can't even comprehend that 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 idea of just having to like one having to live in this area that was you know where you lived that was your home and now you have to you have to live where where like these monitors are I, I, just the idea that like and if for somehow the battery on this monitor fails you can be poisoned and die I, is 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 there any I mean obviously the the probably the EPA is is paying for their hotels somewhere out of the area but it, what type of compensation are the are some of these you know residents getting uh, are are they going to get compensated for their land being destroyed their homes being destroyed Well basically ever since um it was confirmed that the underground cavern operated by Texas Brine which is the company that operated the cavern ever since it was confirmed that that cavern actually did did collapse and and the, the sinkhole occurred be, because of that. Uh, they that company has been paying um, each each uh, household about eight hundred and fifty seventy five dollars a week that pays for expenses if they choose to be living somewhere else. Um, and now they're in the process of trying to buy out all these people's homes and some of the people have been like, yes, please buy my home. I want to get out of here and, you know, live somewhere else. And people don't want to leave. They don't want to leave their home that they've created for themselves here. Or they just don't think Texas Brian is offering enough money for their home. So this is, this is another class action lawsuit. Uh, there's a bunch of negotiations going on. Uh, some people have taken offers from Texas Brian to have their homes bought out and the people haven't. But basically because this is, there's really no way to fix this sinkhole. It's not going anywhere. The solution for compensating these people is the company is literally going to have to buy their homes and give them enough money to uh, relocate somewhere else. And what, what's what, again? What's what, what this shows, and then what the, the 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 previous story that we were talking about about fracking in the ocean shows is, for the most part, we have really no idea of what the actual consequences of fracking actually are. I mean, we do. We, we actually can see a lot of them. We can see a, a sinkhole. We can see, uh, you know, oil spills. We can see water being lit on fire. And, and the fact that, that to this day you have, you know, President Obama, you know, in, the, in his last climate speech, completely embracing fracking as, as, a, great, as a great way of, of, of Americans to get their energy. Um, we really are, 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 as a nation, fairly misinformed about really how dangerous fracking is. Well, you know, I think if, if someone who works in the industry would very quickly point out that this brine cavern that, um, although it, it, it fractured the earth when it collapsed, the water coming out for it was similar to hydraulic fracturing. It's not actual, uh, it, it's not the fracking it, process, right? But, but what this is, is the oil and gas industry. This is the petrochemical industry. This is, this is going into the earth and extracting natural resources. Hydraulic fracturing is a way to do that. And I think what we can learn here is that, you know, we can get these new technologies. We can... Um, you know, safely operate uh, oil and gas and natural resource extraction technology for years and years and years, but there's always going to be risks. There's always going to be accidents, and sometimes the accidents are incredibly major. And we just don't know what's going to happen in the future when we start turning the earth below us into Swiss cheese in pursuit of oil and gas and other uh, precious resources from beneath the earth. It's just, there's, there's, 
there's going to be problems. There have always been problems. And often the problems are very big. The oil spills we have in the ocean are massive environmental disasters. The sinkhole, which, you know, is, was a product of um, a process that was going to the great brine that goes to the petrochemical cities to process the oil that we get from the ocean. This is a really big deal. It's just impacting people's lives and changing them forever. And, uh, yeah, there's always risks involved in, in, in natural resource extraction, and that's just the way it is. Yeah, and the fact that so much of this is done in secret without people knowing the process is also unbelievably disturbing and something that, again, Mike Ludwig, reporter for Truthout, truth-out.org. Um, it's really important stuff that, that more and more people need to know about what actually what the consequences of this of this is. You can find his reports, again, at Truthout. You can find Mike on Twitter at Ludwig underscore Mike. Uh, Mike, thank you so much for your great reporting, and thanks for being on the show again. Thanks so much. I appreciate it.